Good morning, Dr. Stagg. I am so excited to have you on. It's been a long time coming. So thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to come and chat with me. Thank you, Brittany, for having me. Absolutely. And I, I hear so many wonderful things about you from Joanne. I don't get to work with you as much one-on-one -on -one through my aware, but I know Joanne absolutely adores you. And, you know, the relationship that you guys um, have grown together is super awesome and the lives that you're changing. So I'm excited to have you on here and learn more about you and the pot um, and your book and everything that you do at the office so that everybody can learn more. And anybody listening that is well, actually, let me let me have you kind of introduce yourself. Tell us where you're located, where patients can find you. All right. And uh, well, I just want to tell you, it's so interesting because you were trying to contact me for forever and then COVID happened. And then your partner, Joanne, who I love dearly, also moved to my little town. How wild is that? on the east coast of florida and it was like oh my god we hooked up and i actually have in my own backyard now a myofunctional therapist who is so airway savvy and has the science down pat and is like top notch so i'm blessed i'm really blessed yes um joanne has been a great adjunct to my practice um i always tell everybody i can't do this on my own my strengths are connecting the dots, which is, you mentioned how it's all connected. So my book is coming out. Um, it's at the printers. So it's going to be coming out. My first copy proof to proofread will be out sometime end of March. And I'm hoping they'll be ready for sale in April, 2024. How exciting. That is fantastic. Very. So tell us a little bit about you know, the book and how you kind of, you know, had the idea to start writing it. Like what, when did it come to you that you wanted to write a book? And it's a very large book, everybody. So, you know, there's how many chapters in the book? 47. Four, so she put her heart and soul into this book. So bye, for everybody, bye. the title of the book, it is called Smile. It's all connected, whole health through balance. So give us your inspiration. So um, what happened is um, it's my life's work. And as a mother, dentist, boss lady, you name it, everything, it's really hard to connect and to find time to do everything. And um, originally what happened, I, I got pregnant very late in life. I was nearly 40. And my firstborn, Emily, fell when she was three and hit her chin. Now, I'd already been on my journey of the chemical aspect and then the functional aspect, how to put things together, because my brain works. Why? Why is this not working? Why are patients not having success? And the conventional route of doing dentistry, like you said, you mentioned two doctors. Dr. Jim Carlson has a term called a BA mouth doctor. And what I'm coining now is a whole body doctor, as in, um, and Dr. Alfonda, who is one of the doctors that I talk about, used to call us dental physicians back last century in the 1940s, 50s, 60s. And there's a term, uh, there's a book called The Dental Physician. So when Emily fell and hit her chin, um, automatically anybody who has trauma in the chin will always usually end up with a joint disorder mm -hmm. and conventionally the treatment for that with displaced discs and trauma and damaged discs is jaw surgery and I said there was no way I was gonna let anybody cut my cat my child open so I started my journey that was in 2003-2004 my husband at the time built this building, which is a green building. It's the only one like it in the world, um, which happens to be a hurricane shelter for our beachside community. <laughs> I was gone practically every weekend because the more I learned is the more I realized I didn't know. And then I didn't know. And every time I went to a course, I, um, I got more information and I was like, oh, my God, I need to know this yesterday. I need to know this yesterday. And my gift, my gift is being able to connect the dots that, that it's just a gift that I have. I'm very intuitive to figure out how it works together and everything I learned, I distilled, I sort of funneled it and I created systems, other systems and other systems. And so 
from 2004 on, I basically just created more and more systems. And I eventually did a fellowship with the American Academy of Craniofacial Pain. Amongst all the other residencies I did, I had done. And then I finished up with a master's at Tufts in and I graduated from that in 2011. And then basically I said, okay, God, I got all this. Now what do I do with it? <laughs> so seriously, one day in meditation, it was like, okay, all right, what am I going to do with this? You gave me all this information, which, and by the way, I treated Emily and her sibling thereafter. And so everything I did on one, I did on the other. And then this vision came to mind, okay, I have a little head, a little stick figure, the eyes, the ears, and the bite need to be level. Mm -hmm. And then around that, I had every single course that I had taken for the last 10 or eight or 10 years. And then I just like, boom, how it was all connected. And each one had its strength but they focused in on what they were doing and what their field, or as Joanne would say, their wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, but there's a body attached to that little part. There's a body attached. There's a body attached. So what I did is I went ahead and I put it all together. And then I created this, this, this book, which is a reference manual. It's a book for parents it's for the lay person, which is what makes it so different. Mm -hmm. I showed how it used to be mm -hmm. before they threw the baby out with the bath water back in the late 1800s and the whole last century, how it used to be, how it was natural care, how the body can heal itself, how we were just dental physicians. And then I bring it to the present. And then that's when I connect the the whole system and that's where we have the six petal flower i don't know with the glare if you can see it yeah, no 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 we can see it okay so the six petal flower is basically the six connections you have we start off with structural chemical um, functional mechanical emotional and spiritual i have a huge section on airway practically because you know, oh, well, what I did is in each of the six sections, each section, I literally go ahead and I divided that into anatomy. So each section, um, structurally, we talked about the head, the neck, the airway, the TM joints, and then the rest of the body and the tongue, somewhere in there, the tongue. So I always say that you can survive. You need to breathe and swallow in order to survive. You need to breathe and swallow in order to thrive. What do the two have in common? What's the differentiating factor between surviving and thriving? It's tongue and tongue space. So that's where that would tie in with your wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, I go ahead and I finish the present section. And then we finish the end of the book with what's happening. It's a big synopsis at the end how it's all tied in together, and then what I had envisioned the future to be in dentistry and what I think. See, my goal, my goal was this all along, all right, as a mom. Mm -hmm. I know that I searched for all the answers to all the questions that I didn't have, all right? I have done this for the layperson. I have done this for all the other moms. I have answered all their questions because this is a compilation of questions that they have asked me for 40 plus years. And then I also had as a mother, right? Mm -hmm. So what I did is I compiled all these questions and I made it methodically referenced and very highly documented with peer-reviewed research. So it's not woo woo stuff. <laughs> not a pedantic textbook there but it's a reference manual if you will it's a book it's my life and storytelling if you will about how it's all connected and that was the goal that was the goal to make it easy for anybody to pick it up because in reality if we change the demand the supply will have to change. So if we change the way the dentistry is perceived or understood in the world, 
then they're going to have to get back to where we used to be as dental physicians. Yeah. I think that it's just absolutely beautiful that it's coming from, you know, obviously you're a brilliant clinician, but also from the mother side, like you've walked in these family. Yeah. And that's so important, especially because we know how difficult this journey can be for families and overwhelming. And sometimes, you know, moms are ridden with guilt. And so I think it's really cool that you're able to come at it from both. And I just love that the book focuses on like a culmination of answering questions that no one really seems to get to, to really help patients get to that root cause. It's always just like, we'll slap a bandaid on this. We'll slap a bandaid on that. And before we know it, the patient's even sicker than they started out. Um, can you kind of share with the audience how, and we kind of talked about this a little bit before we started recording, like how seeing a clinician like you would be different seeing a dental physician or a doctor of the mouth would be different than seeing somebody that's focusing more on the teeth. Okay. So the biggest comment that I always get, well, actually there's several is why doesn't my other doctor do it this way? <laughs> You're thorough and nobody's ever told me this. And I'm talking about not only their dentist, but their physicians. Yeah. So what happens is when they walk in and they, first of all, there's a very large triage questionnaire. I call it the screenage. We screen patients <laughs> for what they're looking for to see if we can help them and also to know how to schedule them. But no one comes in, well, I should repeat that. Everyone comes in with an initial comprehensive examination. Of course, if you have an emergency, it is what it is. But every single time, I want to get to know you. Mm -hmm. So we do the basic doctor examination, radiographs, but I also do a joint vibration analysis to check the status of the jaw joints. I also take body pictures, front, side, left, right, whole body, everything. So already the visit in itself for what they're paying for, which is just a couple hundred dollars, they're getting a massive amount of data accumulation. All right. And then I spend my time. I, first of all, interview them. So I spend a good 20, 30 minutes going over their intake forms with them, which nobody does anymore. Then I actually touch them, palpate and check muscles and airway and everything whilst I'm working on them. And then obviously the last thing, and I always make a joke about it, I say, okay, let's do the dental part now. <laughs> and then we're going to probe, right? And yep. say, dad, nobody's ever done that with me. So I actually touch them, which is more than a physician does anymore any day. And I look at the back of their throat. I look at their airway. I look at their tongue. And so then, then they return. Nobody gets their teeth clean. Nobody's... Mm -hmm. started treatment on them they return for consultation mm -hmm. i have them watch a video that i created about what to expect from the consultation they would have gotten tons of information pre-sent to them about what the options are etc please watch these little videos which are on my website smileprofessionals.com or healthconnectionsdentistry.com they could go ahead and start educating themselves because that's i think the most important thing is you got to know, you got to know, all right? I mean, I could talk to the cows come home, but unless you own it, mm -hmm. it's just like blah, 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 Whoop, one ear through the other. So if you're interested, the knowledge is there. I'm just the light on your path. I'm just the messenger. It's up to you to integrate it, to understand it, to know what you want. And that's what I tell them. You're going to come back for a consultation and I'm going to present to you my findings. And then we have a consultation, which can last usually over an hour. Well, and I go over the films. I go over maybe 40, 50 pictures that we've taken that are body pictures, intra oral pictures, their JVA, the radiographs, their probes, everything. Sometimes if they were very, very cognizant and aware already that they had issues, they would have done a cone beam or a 3D cone beam. And then you could actually see the airway restrictions. You could see the joint disorders. We can actually measure the uvula. I mean, there's so many other things. They call it the STAG report because I asked for so many things on there. Um, it's <laughs> an eight-page report from the diagnostic. So awesome. 
yeah. And so, um, so I spent a lot of time teaching them or sharing with them what what's going on with their head and neck. Um, already at that time, I can say, okay, well, what do you want to do with your mouth for the rest of your life? Because this is affecting X, Y, Z, A, B, C, D, how many parts of your body? Um, those other body parts are not in my wheelhouse what would you want to do? How do you want? I, so I call it reverse engineer down the rabbit hole. You went down the rabbit hole. What level do you want to get well to? Yeah. All right. Yeah. And then that's where all the other helpers come in. Yeah. So um, that's where if we know that we're going to go ahead and need my functional therapy, that's where I'll refer them um, to Joanne. If we know that we need a chiropractor, then I'll send them to a chiropractor. If we know that we need an endocrinologist because they're they have issues if they need a physician. I mean, the list goes on and on. Mm -hmm. However, I always say I would like to intelligently talk to those physicians or co-therapists. I think it would be ideal. Now, of course, if they have severe sleep apnea because they might have done a, um, a sleep screening and I can't diagnose it, but I can read, obviously, the reports. I can say, you need to see a physician ASAP to diagnose that you have sleep apnea. Um if I can go ahead and get them to see the severity of their issues or they're in a, they've already, they're ready to start getting well, then I'll say, okay, you know what? Let's do diagnostic records. And then that's when they'll come back and I'll do a two and a half hour appointment, which then I send, you know, a CEF, I do an occlusal analysis on my AccuLiner. I would already have the sleep screening and the cone beam. And then I um, put all that together and they, then they get a 26 page report from me. Wow. That is incredible. And I think, you know, you nailed it with the education piece being so important because, you know, they, people want to understand why they're investing in their health, right? Like they want to know the, they don't just want to be thrown this treatment plan. They want to understand like, what is this treatment plan actually going to do? What is it going to get to the root cause of? And I think the other thing that I absolutely love that you said in the very beginning, when you started explaining the process, when the patient comes in and you ask them what, like, basically, what are they there for? Like, what are the patient's goals? Because patients want to be heard. They want to be listened to. And yeah. we know on our end as clinicians, what we're seeing and what you're diagnosing, but it's always important to get down to what is important to the patient too. And I love that part. About right. It. And and that's the whole thing is that, um, you know, you, you, you can get a lot of pushback. You can get pushback from the patient, but you can get pushback from the physicians. Mm -hmm. So I had an 80 something year old gentleman, sadly. I mean, he had no airway. I mean, you could see the fossies, the, the back of the yeah. throat. The His tongue was massive. He was all blue. And yeah. I was like, Hey, you know, you need to tell your physician, if you don't want to do a sleep screening with me, ask your physician, Medicare will cover it. It's not like you can't get coverage. Money right. was an right. issue. So he went to his physician and his physician said, she's just a dentist. What does she know? Oh boy. <laughs> so this is where I think the book is priceless because if the patient can get educated as in, okay, what is it that I can learn and I can know which questions to ask or I can do my own research. And this is why too, I send them, we send them a lot of videos or um, reports or things. And I know it's overwhelming because that's what they say all the time. This is overwhelming. I said, I know, mm -hmm. but you got to figure out what it is that you have and then we could take it from there. You decide but you got to know what's going on. Right. And once you do, I can only guide you and you can say, okay, well, what are my options? I could say, well, you could do this or you could do that, but you know, let's intelligently figure out what the options are first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you don't keep throwing something at the wall and hoping something will stick. Right. It's a bullseye. Let's shoot for the bullseye, a dartboard. Let's shoot for the bullseye. And you'll find a lot of subsidiary, a lot of other mm -hmm. symptoms will dissipate. But if you go to the root cause each and every single time, more than likely, you'll get a lot better, a lot faster, right. more quickly, and priceless. I mean, to me, that's, odd. and I wish I had had that um, growing up because all of this was my journey. Mm -hmm. um, 
as in um a young a young mother actually i i had mine as i said very late so you know there's always the toss up you got the young women who have these babies and then you know the kids they don't know the wisdom comes later they have no money no wisdom or you have the older mother that has the wisdom but no time <laughs> <laughs> right so i i did it all i put it right. all in the book to where you have the the knowledge of a mother who's been there, done that. Mm -hmm. You have the knowledge of a doctor who's been there, done that, who said, okay, you're telling me something, but it's not making sense. Why are you teaching me or telling me this? I'm not going to accept what you're telling me as your set in stone system. Why is it working for you? I need to understand that because it may work for patient X, Y, Z, but I have patient A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and it's not working. So if you understand the concepts and the theory behind it, that's when you can make it more malleable and you can cater it to each patient individually. And that's what the book does. There's a little bit of everything. It's like a spider web. I know some people are agoraphobic and the spider web is maybe not the best analogy with spiders, <laughs> but literally that's what it is. It's the body's right. like, like a marionette. You pull one part, everything else is connected. That's why it's it's health connections, dentistry, whole health through balance. We yeah. want homeostasis. We want balance. That was a play on eyes, ears, bite, by the way, because we seek to be level at all times with a bite. Otherwise, we're catawanka. But if you go ahead and you don't have that levelness, then you're just totally pulling right. in the wrong directions and your own... Um, it's it's not in the integrated um it's not as it's not um compre and then that's a good way of looking at it it's not a wholesome way it's not a comprehensive way it's just right. a meal way and you've got people that need that you got people who need to see a periodontist you need people who need to see an endodontist you need to be people who need to see an oral surgeon mm -hmm. but it's not it's it's all pieces of the whole right and that's the whole part that, that I find we're missing. Well, I'm so excited to get a copy of the book. And we always, we have a little book nook area in our office that I always leave the books out for the families, you know, to take a peek at. And one of the other things that I want to talk about, because of course, as a myofunctional therapist, I hear this a lot from other myofunctional therapists, you know, airway dentists, they understand the importance of myofunctional therapy. But I find that, what I hear, at least from a lot of myofunctional therapists, is there's a lot of airway dentists that almost don't know how to explain the myofunctional therapy part to the patients or the importance, where some patients may still call the myofunctional therapist and say, well, I was told I need to see you. I don't really know why. And, you know, Joanne, like I said, she always raves about you. Like your patients already come in getting it. They understand it. And, yeah. you know, I feel like... um we need that backup from the dentist, right? Like you, they, the patients need to understand why they shouldn't just be getting expansion by itself and why that myofunctional therapy component is so important. So if you can talk a little bit about how you explained like that we're two peas in a pod, we really can't work without each other. Right, right. So at the beginning, I alluded to that in the sense that there's two things you need to do to survive. One is breathe and swallow. Two things you need to do to thrive is breathe and swallow and the common denominators, tongue and tongue space. So they look at me and I say, okay, why? And I say, okay, so you go ahead and we talk about neurology. I mean, you can make it fancy or you could dumb it down. And I don't like the word dumb it down, but you can make it as simple as it needs to be. And I think Einstein said, it's only those who don't understand the concept that will make it complicated because they can't explain it simply. All right. I'm paraphrasing. So in effect, I let them know and I show them because I've taken dozens of pictures and I show them this is the. I told you I spoke with my hands and I need I love to it. So do I, Dr. Sag. I'm right there with you. <laughs> So this is my Fred, okay? This is the top. This is the middle of the face. This is, I'm talking as if you're a, a patient, yes. all right? Yes. This is the head, all right? This is the top, middle, and lower part of the face, all right? I tell them the part that I'm going to help you with 
is this. All right. Guess what? This is called the maxilla. Is this. All right. This is magnetic. All right. This is my nose. You need to breathe through your nose because that's what makes what's what's healthy. You don't eat through your nose. You don't breathe through your mouth. You eat, you breathe through your nose. All right. This is your nose. What's the floor of the nose? Is the top of the mouth is the palate. All right. This is the box. This is the shoe. Falling apart here. <laughs> this is the shoe. Well, what's the foot? Is the tongue. So think of Cinderella's stepsister where she had to scrunch her foot in to get to mm -hmm. the shoe to be married to the friend. <laughs> it's the same thing. If you're foot can't fit inside the shoe can't fit inside the box it has nowhere to go but back all right so my next prop is a really good one and this is what i use all the time i don't know with the glare if you can see it is that okay yep all right so basically this is the patient laying down all right you can see that the uvula is going to be pretty long and the tongue goes back so what I say is very simply put, my functional therapy is going to help you get that tongue where it needs to be so you can breathe. Now, a lot of times, remember, some patients would have actually gone ahead and done the cone beam. Oh, my God, Britt, you will go ahead and see them with their uvula plastered to the back of their throats, their airway non-existent, sitting up. Mm -hmm. Imagine when they're laying down. Right. So... I go ahead and I explain my job is to go ahead and to make the box bigger, mm -hmm. to make the shoe bigger so that the tongue, which is your foot, which you were born originally, possibly with a size 10 foot, but for whatever reason, allergies, environmental issues, you ended up with a size six shoe box and a size six shoe but you still have a size 10 tongue mm -hmm. we're gonna try to get you back to a size 10 shoe box and then joanne or your myofunctional therapist will show you how to put your foot in properly mm -hmm. and then 99 times out of 100 there's a tether holding that tongue to where it can't go where it needs to go so think of the racehorse that's got blinders on and you're opening the gate for the horse to go down and win a race, but it's got a bungee cord attached to it. So it's <laughs> trying to go, but it's being pulled back. So let's let the horse go. So once you go ahead and you understand, and I'm very, I do a lot of analogies because- No, I, I love it. This is great. I kind of intuitively, because energetically, I pick up on what works best for them. And then I just go ahead and I- rattle off a few they're all in the book by the way every single one of them okay. but um what happens is like okay well then my functional therapist is going to go ahead and get the horse ready mm -hmm. the horse is going to row the track mm -hmm. so that as soon as you go ahead and she says that hey you're ready that means that the horse can let get out and then i will go ahead and surgically release that bungee cord and that tether so now your horse can race mm -hmm. boo and then you'll hit a bullseye every time usually we would have done that after i've already started expanding and yes we can expand arches on adults <laughs> rephrase this in a different way and there's tons of research on my website. I got so much pushback about how you can't expand anybody after age nine. I was 50 something when I did my own arch expansion. All right, get over it. There's a Google review from an 83 year old woman that I have expanded her arches on. All right, with an alf, an alf of all things. Cranially, she was so distorted because she was a class three, which means she was like this her entire life 83 mm -hmm. eight decades plus three years 83 all right so it is ludicrous to think that you cannot get well it's not an age issue the sutures are not fused the only time the sutures are fused is when you're dead <laughs> they don't move anymore after that 
All right. Is there so, a certain um, way you like to expand adults, like certain appliances, like your go-to appliances, or is it very per patient? Every different. That's that's why we do the records because some of them you can start with, and then it's just like I tell them if I'm here in Brevard and I want to go to Jacksonville, which is north of me, I can go on which highway? I can go on A one A. I can go on right. US. I can go on the the scenic route. There might be a detour. There might be a different accident. Whatever everybody's different. That's why I said, let's cater to you as the individual, because we got to know what you need. And then start with one. Now, Joanne, and, and sometimes I have no choice, but to start with the ALF. And the ALF is just like a little itsy bitsy little wire. And it just reduces all the cranial strains. We can go ahead and start moving the shoe box. And then usually we can go ahead and get arch expansion, which is a great benefit of this appliance. Um, you have to understand though, sometimes I have no choice because the patients are so distorted. All right. And then afterwards, I might go ahead and I might do a more conventional orthopedic, what the average orthodontist might be aware of. Um, unfortunately, sometimes I see a lot of patients have what they call rapid palatal expansion. And this is where I have to explain that less is more. Because if you go ahead and you do it too fast, then you end up the suture, instead of going slowly, you know, a millimeter a month, no, that's exaggerated, but a millimeter a month, and then you get bone, a millimeter a month, you get bone, a millimeter a month, you get bone, a millimeter a month, and then six months later, you finish, but you have bone. Whereas what they'll do for rapid palatal expansion is they'll get this and then they'll make you wait six months. It's like, right. doesn't make sense because now instead of having bone, they usually end up with a lot of collagen and a lot of collagen means they'll end up with scar tissue and they'll end up with relapse. So it's not the same quality bone. Mm -hmm. So th that's just my two cents. This is yeah. what I've seen from through the years. And that's what I did on my kids. That's what I did on myself. Yeah. What I rapid palatal expansion no so again it all depends on the patient and i guess where you're trained right absolutely this has been absolutely fantastic dr stag um again once once you get that official date we'll definitely announce it with your um release of the podcast. I'm like I said, I'm super excited to get my hands on the book and be able to read it. And it's just going to be such a wealth of knowledge for families. And even, even though I know it's more for, you know, the lay person and families, I still think that healthcare providers, because the way with your analogies and being able to explain things to patients in a way that they can accept it and understand it, I feel like clinicians have the right they want to do the right thing, but sometimes they just don't know how to go about it the right way. Um, right. So being able to have, you know, your examples of how you've gotten it done, um, right. I think can just be so, so, so helpful. So thank you for, you know, your amazing contribution and time that it took to write this amazing book um, and for coming on and chatting with me. Is there anything else you want to leave the audience with before we wrap up? So as I said, my original goal was to write the book for laypersons. But again, I'm hoping, like you mentioned, and I'm so glad you brought this up, is that the doctors will be curious enough to understand. And I do what, and I would like to train doctors and, and teach doctors these systems. So, I mean, sheesh, that's like 40 years worth of knowledge. Let's pass it on, um, you know, right. Under Western Price, um, Royal Lee, all these doctors, they've already done the systems. I just sort of connected all the dots. Mm -hmm. I, I i would like doctors to be able to create these practices, the health connections, dental practices, so that more people can benefit from it, so that they'll understand that, okay, maybe they may not know how to do it, but there are resources out there. So that's the biggest thing is that you may not know how to do something, but you're aware that something else exists. So you have another trick, another tool, another arrow in your quiver to get that bullseye, whether you shoot the arrow or not, the arrows are there. And that's what this book about is all the quiver arrows that are there in one location to help people get well. I love it. I love it. Thank you again so much, Dr. Sag. Um, and then, you know, once the book comes out, we'll have to have you back on again, because I'm sure people are going to want to ask you tons and tons of questions. 
Um, so thank you for taking the time and just for being as brilliant as you are. Oh, thank you. And thank you for having me. It was such a pleasure to chat with you.